Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the 6-5 Podcast. I'm Daniel Newman, CEO of the Futurum Group and host here on the 6-5. Sitting in today for this conversation, we're going to be talking to our friends at Micron about G9 NAND, the world's fastest NAND. We're going to talk about memory. You know, by the way, talk about a renaissance. I mean, in the era of AI, has there been a bigger moment for memory? Let's talk about that, but let's not talk about that with me alone. Let's bring Russ Meyer. Russ is the Senior Vice President of NAND Technology Development at Micron. Russ, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Uh, hi, Dan. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks. It is good to be here. So you hear my little introduction, you know, all uh, excited like. You know, sometimes it's funny about the booms and busts of semiconductors. And of course, those sometimes historically commoditized technologies like memory, where people like to put it in a box. We're going to take it out of the box today. We're going to talk about some of that differentiation. But what a moment you're having, right? I mean, are you feeling it right now? I mean, the demand is through the roof. A few really great earnings after a tough period of time. Everyone at Micron's got to be feeling pretty good, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a great call out, Dan. It, we're coming off a very challenging year in 2023. And as you said, we're looking forward to some strong secular growth driven by AI and the applications that that's going to drive in the, for the memory uh, demand. So we're excited about that. And we're excited about some our string of uh, recent uh, product announcements. Yeah, that's been a big part of the story with Micron. It's not just memory. It's about innovation here. And as we're seeing with high bandwidth memory and what's going on with it, powering AI, not all memory and not any memory serves the need. And as we kind of hear about the rate limiting innovation and the rate limiting um, manufacturing requirements, it's like we can build all the GPUs in the world, but if we can't get enough memory, we can't build the systems. And so this is coming to a head right now, but I want to talk about G9 NAND and I want to talk a little about what you're doing there. You know, you've been on a roll, lots of announcements. You know, you mentioned you had the uh, the SSD, the 9550, um, and now the G9 NAND and 2650. Um, kind of run me through these. Just run me through the whole thing. And I mean, you've even got the what's the the, the industry's first PCIe Gen 6 SSD for ecosystem enablement that you guys showed off at FMS. So, wow, that was a mouthful. But like, give me the rundown on all these announcements. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Thanks for noticing. We are pretty excited about the string of announcements. We've been busy here at Micron building some great products and and targeting these uh, storage solutions that are going to accelerate AI. The the announcements that you highlighted, um, they're pretty strong announcements as far as uh, industry leading products. That, but the third announcement um, and the one that's you know very close to my heart is that G9 and technology announcement, and and that's not only an announcement of the technology itself. It's the announcement that we are shipping that technology in a drive, the 2650 client SSD drive. So let's let's double click on that a bit. Um, you've sort of started to allude to it, but give us a bit of a deeper dive on the you know G9 and technology. What makes it unique? Um, you know, this is sort of a first, right? You know, NAND in an SSD. This is the first uh, ninth generation NAND yeah. uh, SSD, and it's 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 really the culmination of years of a multi year development cycle. Uh, so the team's been working on this for many years now, from concept through development to now now to productization. And there's many milestones along the way as we go through that cycle. But this milestone is always a big one for us because this is the the culmination. This is the realization of shipping this new technology into an actual product, so our customers and partners can start leveraging the advanced performance that it delivers. One of the the focus points on this Gen 9 technology is focusing on the performance and the increased bandwidth. We deliver that you know, with multiple parameters. One is the on-fee interface speed. So it's, uh, it's, this is going to be an industry-leading 3.6 gigabytes per second uh, interface speed, which is a 50% jump from uh, any competitive NAND available and from our previous uh, Gen 8 or G8 uh, solution as well. Uh, on top of that, the latencies enables a 99% better read and 88% better write bandwidth than what we see on competitive die that are available today. So these are pretty strong numbers and really driving now into the client SSDs, but we're going to be driving products 
through data center automotive on with these solutions as well. The other thing I'll highlight, Dan, is we've driven the density on this NAND. It's 73% more dense than what we see in competitive NAND shipping and SSDs today. So the other enabler that, that we brought in with this technology is uh, we're doing a six-plane architecture with independent right. word line. What that enables is that enables a, a much stronger bandwidth and, and improved read and write performance, which yep. from the customer usage experience is a stronger or higher quality of service. So you have less uh, collisions between uh, read and write commands. So all this pulled together in the density was also key in enabling us to maintain the footprint in the 11.5 millimeter package, which we've been targeting, uh, which uh, is 28% lower than what we see with most competitors in the industry as far as how much area it takes on that PCB board. So it gives the customers a, a lot more flexibility in signal routing, thermal performance, and the PCB layout in general. No, I mean, that's that's really encouraging. And I'm glad you called out the generation item. I, I was twisted tongue there. When you start going through the... Uh, the specs and builds of, of, of memory, it's so uh, it's moving so quickly and there's so much innovation going on. And speaking of moving quickly and innovation going on, you have been historically focused on layer counts, you know, 232 layer NAN. Now you're sort of pivoting here in this particular with the ninth generation and you're not using layer count. Um, you know, I like my cakes with layers, but maybe I prefer my, my <laughs> NAN with generations. Um, talk a little bit about kind of why you did that, you know, because obviously that's still an important technological differentiation. Yeah, so there's a couple points here, Dan. One is primary reason for the change is it drives consistency with how the rest of the industry is communicating their generational transitions with NAND. So that gets us more consistent with the, the industry. It also helps drive better clarity with the customers as to you know what products we have and, and what generation they belong to you know historically the layer count or the tier count historically has been a kind of a good headline metric it's been a one of the key metrics that we highlight as to uh signaling where we're at with the technology cadence but it's really the reality is that layer count is just one of several vectors that we have available to us to drive uh, the scaling and the performance roadmap. So it's just one of those vectors. And sometimes, Dan, it's not even the best one. So uh, what we're seeing as we look forward, it, I mean, the customers are most concerned about performance, bit density, cost efficiency, power efficiency, and those considerations. And uh, like I mentioned, is layer count in and of itself isn't the best way to bring that package together. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, in cars, you know, everyone likes to talk about horsepower, but uh, sometimes that's the best example. Sometimes it's torque. Sometimes it's a, the, you know, the amount of efficiency you can get out of an engine. Different people care about different things. So I think what you're basically alluding to right now is that there are a number of key elements. That's one of them. But this newest generation gives them many of these different key elements that they're trying to, you know, optimize and build their products around. That's exactly right. And as a development team, one of the things we focus on is what's the best overall solution to deliver the customer's demands. And on the G9, for example, we put a lot of innovations and focus into compressing the array in an XY direction. So you get more pillars, more memory cells per unit area. And what that does is it allows us to get to those uh, scaling numbers without driving tier count uh, ever higher. The other thing I point out is, and you'll, you'll be seeing this across the industry, is layer count for the first decade of vertical NAND was a primary driver in the scaling. And what you're, what you're going to see is there's, going, there's a paradigm shift happening as we go into the second generation of vertical NAND scaling, where there's going to be a lot more pressure and focus on the other enablers for scaling uh, above and beyond tier layer count. Yeah, absolutely. And look, there's growing competition, of course, here in the U.S., leader, manufacturer, innovator, critical part of our infrastructure. Uh, and, and that's been really important, even just following what's gone on with CHIPS Act and now with AI and the desire to build more here, but you're not only leading here in the States, you're leading around the globe from a design standpoint. You know, I've watched uh, Micron be a first in a number of different areas, um, especially throughout this NAND transition. 
shipping them, you know, in SSDs straight out of the gate. And I think this goes back four or five years now. Um, you know, it seems that when y'all make an announcement, that's my Texas coming out. When y'all make an announcement <laughs> about around and it's, it's real. It's not a, you know, it's not a horizon. It's not, this is what's going to happen in two years, or this is the next decade. It's now. Um, and of course, seeing it consumed so heavily in SSDs, talk a little bit more about that kind of leadership that uh, the company's been able to, to achieve. Connecting these announcements with product delivery to our customers is important. It really allows them uh, to have confidence and reliable uh, understanding of what our timeframes are. So when we make these announcements, we like to link it to actual shipping of the next generation SSDs to our partners and customers. It's not an announcement of an upcoming product in the next year, or it's not an announcement of, you know, introducing next gen uh, NAND into manufacturing. It's it's an announcement of delivering these drives uh, to our partners and, and customers. So it's a very real milestone and it's one that we prioritize. Like you said, we've focused uh, over the last few years uh, to drive our next generations into the SSDs first. So G7, and back in 2020, we were the lead SSDs delivering G7. Um, a couple of years later, we were the lead company delivering uh, G8 into the SSD solutions. And we're continuing that now with this recent announcement where we're driving the ninth generation. And by the way, it would have been easy given the turbulent economy, the market, the difficulty of memory for Micron to probably you know, it wouldn't have been fun, but you could have kicked and pushed things out. You could have said, hey, we're going to slow R&D spend and, you know, we're going to uh, slow certain investments. You know, you, actually throughout those years, you made a number of big commitments to building further uh, capacity, to driving innovation. And that wasn't necessarily true across the industry. I mean, um, you know, do you see this opportunity to to keep the leadership? I mean, we're seeing big dollars doled out in Chips Act, some to you, some to your competition. Like, what do you see there? Is is, is, is staying in, in front something you feel comfortable and confident in? Yeah, yes. We've been driving the, the technical leadership for the past few generations, and we do expect to maintain that cadence. And do make a good point is when you have very challenging industry periods like where we are just uh, finishing up, it can be a real issue or challenge for the team to keep the cadence going. And the fact that Micron is able to keep this cadence uh, moving despite the challenging um, headwinds is really a testimony to, to how important it is for us to maintain that technical leadership so that our partners realize that they have a strong technical leader with us. Yeah, it's always such a push and pull with the markets, the economies, the pressures of Wall Street. Uh, you want to deliver, you want to make shareholders happy. And in this business, of course, it's, you know, there's a, there's peaks and valleys. And, you know, but any of us that's been through these boom and bust cycles know that with every bust comes a boom and we're back in it. But, you know, like I said, you know, you're kind of on the front edge. You know, I want to I want to kind of make sure I'm getting this right about kind of the way you're approaching shipping the latest. So the 2650, for instance, um, first, uh, it's a client SSD. Um, it's one that OEMs will put into their system. It uses the G9 TLC NAND you've built, and it's a value drive. So it's leading, but it's also being designed to be value. Um, but Therefore, it's still really highly performant. How are you sort of, I'm curious, like, how are you tackling all those things? Usually you're, usually it's like that pyramid, like you're giving, you get two, but you give up something and it sounds like <laughs> no sacrifice. All the uh, component enablers and the technology enablers that I walked through earlier, they're all critical in enabling this total solution that we're seeing on the 2650. And the component enablers are critical. They allow the realization on the drive itself to help improve real world user experience. And the 2650 does it very well. So if you look at it compared to current existing competitors, you're looking at a 70% better sequential read, 100% better sequential write, 150% random read. All these show up as not only top-level benchmark improvements, but they actually show up as improving the real-world experience of, of our users and our customers. And there are some, let's say, industry benchmark scores that target quantifying that. And the G9 NAND on the 2650 in the PC Mark 10 
that score came in about 38% better than what's available on the market today. So the, the highlight there, Dan, is that these values or these performance numbers that we're driving through the next-gen NAN are really coming out uh, in the SSD for improved user experience. And, and we do expect that as we drive this G9 into data centers and automotive and, and other solutions, you're going to see that benefit just carry forward. Well, Russ, I want to thank you so much for spending some time. There's a lot here to unpack. I hope everybody heard it, learned it. And if you didn't get it all, well, of course, you can listen again, but you can also check out the notes below. We put more information about the G9 and all the announcements we mentioned here on the podcast in the show notes. Russ, you're going to have to keep us up to date. Sounds like a lot of innovation going on. It's really nice. Uh, well, you know, in 2019, I previewed the year 2020. Ross, I didn't know some of the big things that were going to go on in the world in 2020, but I did say, I wrote a market watch op-ed. I said, Silicon will eat the world. Um, and uh, that was a big prediction that I made. Next five years, it seems to have indeed done that. And it's not just software. Try running software on air, as I always like to say. But anyways, uh, it's been a great run this last 12 months, and I'm very encouraged about where things are headed Continue to be impressed by the stuff that you and your team over at Micron are doing. Let's have you back soon. Let's do this again. Congratulations on all the success and uh, keep on keeping on, my friend. All right. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate the time. And everyone out there, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all our episodes. Check out the 6-5, but I've got to go. So we will see you later.